as many people know, Quidditch is originally a game from Harry Potter. Muggle Quidditch is for people who do not have magical abilities. But this is NYU Quidditch. We've adapted the sport to work for our own limitations. Quidditch is easy enough to understand. There are three kinds of balls. This one's called the quaffle. The first and the main one is the quaffle. It's, as you can see, a volleyball. <laughs> we usually deflate it a little bit so it's easier to grip with one hand. The quaffle is mainly used by the chasers, and what they do is they take the ball, throw it through the hoop, and their team gets 10 points each. The other one is the dodgeball. The dodgeball is used by the beaters. Typically in the Harry Potter books, what this was was there was a bat and there was like an autonomous angry ball. What was that? <laughs> Bludger. Nasty little buggers. In Muggle Quidditch, what we do is that we have three dodgeballs on the field, we have four beaters, um, and basically there's a constant push and pull where if you get beat by one of the dodgeballs, then you have to dismount your broom, tap the hoop, and then you can resume play. But the chasers are not allowed to catch or block the bludger with their bare hands. You can block it with the quaffle, but other than that, only the beaters are allowed to touch the bludger. Not bad, Potter. The other super important piece of equipment is the broom. The broom is, as you can tell, a plastic PVC pipe, not quite a broomstick. Um, but every player has to mount their broom um, and make sure that they stay on broom throughout the entire time that they're playing the game, unless they get hit by a dodgeball or unless they fall off their broom, which they dismount or tap their hoops on their side and then mount resume play. With me so far? I think so. What are those? And the last piece of equipment is the snitch shorts. This is the one that gets the most amount of questions. There's a person who wears the snitch shorts, and what they do is that the seeker is trying to rip the snitch actually off of uh, the snitch itself. What do I do with it? You catch it before the other team seek it. So to make sure that there's no biases going on, uh, there is a different player, a completely different snitch from another team, and they will be the snitch runner for the two teams. And then each team has one seeker that is at the same time going and trying to get this off that snitch to win the game. It's the same as Harry Potter Quidditch. Um, there is no end time to the game. It could technically go on indefinitely. It's not over until the seeker catches the snitch. You catch this, the game is over. You catch this, Potter and we win. But instead of getting 150 points once you catch the snitch, you get 30 points. Um, so you do have to strategically plan when you're going to catch it because you want to make sure that you're up enough to where if you catch it and get the 30 points, you're actually winning. Or in some cases, you just want to tie and bring it into overtime. He's got the snitch! Harry Potter receives 150 points for catching the snitch. Gryffindor wins! You definitely don't want to be a Harry Potter fan to play. There are varying degrees of Harry Potter knowledge on the team. Quidditch is a game for anyone, really. 